This is the final video for section 2.6. One of the things we're going to discuss here is the applications of the derivative. Applications of the derivative. And we will also talk about differentiability versus continuity. In fact, let's do this piece first. Differentiable. f of x is differentiable if f prime of x exists. That is, you can find the derivative. And when does this happen? f prime of x exists if f of x is continuous, which we discussed in the previous section, and it is also smooth. <coughs> so for example, a graph like this, f of x, is continuous and it's smooth everywhere. So this, it is differentiable. We'll use the word diff for differentiable. On the other hand, if you take a look at the absolute value function, f of x equals absolute value of x, it's not smooth there. It's got a sharp turn. Okay, not smooth. So here you would say that f is not differentiable at x equals 0. That's 0. <coughs> you could have a graph that looks like this. And this, let's say this point is 2. Right here is a sharp turn. And so it's not smooth there. So f is not differentiable at 2. In other words, f prime of 2 does not exist. So you'll see a few questions of graphs, and you have to decide whether the function is differentiable or not just by using these concepts. <coughs> OK, so one of the big things is the application of the derivative. <coughs> and it basically gives us the slope of a function, okay, or the average rate of change, or the instantaneous rate of change. So the average rate of change is something you learn in pre-calculus. The okay, average rate of change is just the slope of the secant line, which is it's like f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Or you might have seen it as, you definitely saw it as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Same idea. But when we say rate of change, instantaneous <coughs> rate of change, <coughs> that means it is the derivative. A quick analogy. Let's say you live in Elmira. Okay, here's your house in Elmira. And you're driving to Corning to come to CCC. And you drive a certain distance. Let's say you drive about 30 miles. And supposing it takes you about 25 minutes. <coughs> okay, so your average speed, it's distance over time. So it's 30 miles over 25 minutes, whatever that is. This is your average rate of change. Average rate of change. But if I want to know what your instantaneous speed is right by when you were driving by tags on Route 352, what was your speed limit? And that would be the instantaneous speed. And to get that, you would use the derivative. Okay, so that's the meaning of the, of the derivative. It gives you the instantaneous rate of change the slope of the curve at a certain point. <clears throat> well, let's do a couple questions. I'm going to show you the textbook on my iPad. Hopefully you can see it under this lamp. If not, just find your book, page 151. Okay, page 151, right there. And we're taking a look at question 27 in the text. That one right there. You're given this function, x squared plus x, and you need to find the average rate of change of y with respect to x in the interval from x is equal to 2 to x equals 3, from x is 2 to 2.5, 2 to 2.1, and find the instantaneous rate of change, and then compare the results. All right, so <clears throat> it was 27, 
page 151, f of x, which is y, it's x squared plus x. Part A, find the average rate of change. This is an abbreviation for average rate of change. <coughs> and x is from x equals 2 to x equals 3. So what you want to do first is, corresponding to 2, what is the y value? To get the y value, you go here, plug in 2 there. 2 squared is 4, plus 2 is 6. Plug in 3 there, 3 squared is 9, plus 3, y is 12. So what you have are ordered pairs, 2 comma 6, 3 comma 12. So the average rate of change is 12 minus 6 over 3 minus 2, you just get 6. The next interval given in the problem is from x equals 2 to 2.5. So you need to find the y value again, which we know, it's 6. But over here, to find y, 2.5 squared is 6.25, etc., etc. You could save yourself some trouble by going to y equals and typing in this function. And then go to table, delete that, and type in 2.5. You get 8.75. So average rate of change, change in y, okay, 8.75 minus 6 which is 2.75 divided by 0.5. Okay, so 2.75 divided by 0.5, it's 5.5. Notice how the gap between the x value is shrinking. We do it one more time, from x equals 2 to x equals 2.1. This is what was given in the problem right here. So this is y equals 6. Over here, y would be, going back to table, 2.1, getting 6.51. So average rate of change, subtract the y's, you get 0.51. Subtract the x's, you get 0.1. And when you divide, you just get 5.1. So you can get closer and closer to 2, and you'll see what happens. The pattern will give you a little clue as to what your average rate of change is approaching. But in part B, it says find the instantaneous rate of change. That is the derivative of the function f prime of x equals what? Now you can do the four step process, you know, find f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, take the limit as h goes to zero. But I've done enough examples and so I'm going to just tell you the answer. You can take a moment and do the four steps, but you should get this to be the result, 2x plus 1. The question said to find this at x equals 2, so we're going to simply plug in 2 for x. So find f prime at 2, it's 2 times 2 plus 1, 4 plus 1, which is 5. And that's what these were getting close to. And part C says compare the results obtained in part A with the result of part B. So you can say that um, the average rate of change is approaching 5 as the intervals get smaller. So from now on, if you see the word derivative, it should be synonymous with slope of a curve at a point. Okay, and it should be synonymous with rate of change, instantaneous rate of change. And you can also think of it as slope of a tangent line. And finally, we're going to see one example from physics, and that will be velocity. Okay, so velocity is the change in position. If s of t is the distance, traveled by an object, traveled by an object, then velocity is just the derivative as prime of t, okay, it's a derivative of the position or the distance. Now, towards the end of 2.6, you're going to run into a couple of questions that have you find the velocity. 
I'm going to have you hold off on that until I teach you 3-1 and then you can go back and do it using some shortcuts to speed up the process. So that's the end of this video and if you see other questions that require derivative that's a little messy, you can hold off until we learn the shortcuts.